my friends, we'll be off to new adventures you will see. Off to the center of the earth or the bottom of the sea, so come with me. To the center of the earth, where life has started first, so many things for us to learn. Solve the major mysteries that lie so deep within our precious world. So many leaves just to find the proof we need. Along with all my friends on a trip that never ends to many places old and new. To the center of the earth, where life has started first, so many things for us to learn. So the major mysteries that lie so deep within our precious world. Episode 4, The Sleeping Volcano. It is now 11 days since we left London on our journey to the centre of the Earth. Having travelled by train to Hamburg, we boarded the ship Eleonora to Copenhagen and from there a sailing ship called the Valkyrie on to Reykjavik. But not before Monsieur Sullivan's evil accomplice tried once again to sabotage our journey. This he failed to do and before long we were in Iceland approaching the Sneffels volcano on horseback. That really is wonderful news, Ralph, but it is of vital importance that they start their trip to the centre of the Earth as soon as possible. They are making very good time so far. They only left London 11 days ago. Goodness, I didn't realise so much time had passed. They've only got 59 days left to prove that Arne Sacknesson did in fact go to the centre of the Earth. Oh, they'll prove it all right, Lord Guinness. Our good friend Mr Fogg won't let us down. Of course he won't. If there is any proof whatsoever that Arnie Sackerson succeeded, then Willy Fogg will find it. We were approaching the Sneffels volcano on Arsback. It was the 15th of June, 1866, and we had left London only 11 days ago. But Professor Liedenbrock was more impatient than ever. Whoa there, boy, whoa! <coughs> Oh. Oh. I said, whoa, horse! Now stop all this nonsense, do you hear me? What are you trying to do to me? Oh. Now look here, my fine friend. I think we'd better sort out who's master here. Whoa. Oh. oh, Professor! Ah, are you all right, Professor? Are you okay, Professor Liedenbrock? Perhaps you would like me to get you a drink of water or something. No? No! I should think that that's the last thing I'd need, Rigadon. There's already far too much of it around here, as you can see for yourself. Ah. <laughs> oh, this is really intolerable, Mr. Fogg. Not only do we have to put up with these strips of trachyte and then basalt eruptions, but now there's a river which bars our way to the volcano itself. Come on, Traps, old friend. No hard feelings. Traps, Professor? That really is a most unusual name for a horse. It comes from the name given to the differing horizontal layers of rock that are found here in Iceland, Rigadon. Isn't that right, Professor? That is exactly so, Mr. Fogg. This whole area would really make the most fascinating study for any geologist who cared to come here. But now we must continue our expedition. I agree. Rocks are for geologists. But how are we going to get across this river? There doesn't seem to be a bridge or a path that we could use to go around it. Mr. Fogg, Mr. Fogg, 
This river is impossible to cross, Mr. Fogg. It is too wide and too deep for us. No! Huh? Whoa! <laughs> steady, boy, steady. I think there is another way we can get across the river, Professor. But how, Mr. Fogg? We have already lost so much time, as you are aware. We must reach the Sneffels volcano as soon as possible. So how do you intend to cross the river, Mr. Fogg? It is far too deep. The answer is a very simple one, Rigodon. We wait until a big wave breaks, and then we race across before the next big wave comes in. So we cross in between the waves? Oh, mon dieu! Have you seen the size of them? Yes, I have indeed, Rigodon. Now, listen carefully. There is a gap of exactly 40 seconds between each big wave. 40 seconds will give us just enough time to gallop the horses across as the water is ebbing before the next big wave arrives. Well, it certainly seems like the only solution, so let's do it! We're losing time. I do not think that this is such a good idea, my friend. What do you think, huh? Bring the horses over to the water's edge, Rigodon. I'll ride traps, Professor. You take my horse. Whoa, steady. Come along, Rigodon. We must hurry. Right. Everybody on your horses. We and when I give the signal, you're to ride as hard as you can. I want you to go first, Rigodon. Me first? Oh, what an honour. Get ready now. Ooh, are you sure I should go first? Really, really sure? Oh, mon dieu. I should just like to say what a pleasure it has been to be able to work for you, Mr. Fogg. Be ready to go as soon as I give the signal, Rigodon. We. Oui. Now, Rigodon, now! Go, man! Ooh. Hurry, Rigodon, there's no time to lose! Ooh. Now, go! I try not to get my feet wet. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes! Go on, Rigodon, go as fast as you can! You're lucky you're almost there! For the rest of us, the worst is still to come. That's right, come on! Just a little more, Rigodon. Keep going, man! I made it. Come over, Professor. Uh, come over, he says. That's easy for him to say. He's on the other side. Right, Professor Lindenbrock. Get ready to go. Come over. Get ready to go. I am ready. Come on, my brave horse. We'll show them. Now, let's go. Mm. Oh, oh, now, steady. Steady. Try and hold him steady, Professor Lidenbrock. I can give you the signal, but then it will be up to you. Ah! Oh, very well, then. Off you go, Professor. Do not worry, Mr. Fogg. Everything is perfectly under control. Ah! Ah! Oh. oh, well done, Professor Lidenbrock. Yes, I made it, but didn't you notice those waves are getting higher and higher all the time? I don't think the others will be able to cross. Of course they will make it, but you are right. They will have to be quick about it. Ah, look, here's Hans. <coughs> ah, Professor, there's a gigantic wave. Oh, Mr. Fogg will never make it. Come on, Tramps, it's now or never. Come on faster, Mr. Fogg. Come on, Mr. Fogg, that's it, come on! Well done, Mr. Fogg! <laughs> well done indeed. Now we can get moving again towards the Sneffels volcano. Quite so, Professor, but if you don't mind, I think that first we could all do with a cup of tea. Yes, Rigodon? Mm-hmm. Ah. Ah. There's some good news, Princess Romy. I have just heard from Ralph, an English journalist, that all the bets in London are being wagered on your husband's side. Oh, London. How I wish that we were all back there together again. I may have made a mistake deciding to stay here in Iceland, Professor. 
All that I can do is sit here helplessly and wait for Willy and his companions to come back from their journey to the centre of the Earth. Hey, don't worry, Princess. We're gonna have a great time here in Iceland. We'll do some sightseeing, meet some new friends, maybe even go fishing. <laughs> oh, yes. You should go fishing, my friend. You will find Icelandic cod is the best in the world. Great! I love a fish! The hospitality shown by Icelanders is also the best in the world. Huh? Now, who's gonna be calling here at this time in the morning? Well, I better go and see what they want, huh? Huh? Hey, there's a nobody here. What's going on? Hmm. This is very strange. Ah! Hey, who did that? Come on! Who threw the... Ah! Right, that's it. I'm not in the mood for games. Whoever threw that snowball at me is really gonna be pretty sorry when I get them. Got you, Olaf! Come on! Now you're mm. cheating, Olaf! Yeah, now we got you, Olaf. Cheats never prosper. Now are you gonna play fair or do you want hey, some more? Hey, hey! Huh? Hey, come on, Olaf. You're just in time to help us teach Olaf a lesson for cheating at... Huh? But, but you're Olaf. Olaf? Oh, it is you, Olaf. But then, who can this be? Hey, me. I'm just a poor stranger in this country. That's all. Stefan, Gunnar, Olaf, this is no way to behave. Is this how we treat a guest in our country? Mm? Hey, don't be angry, Professor. You know young people are always going to get excited by snow. Happiness for everybody, they say, is hard to find. The secret is in friendship with someone who is kind. Why would you want to wear a frown? It's easier to smile when everything is good. Smiling for a little while and singing the happiness song. Happiness is a treasure, so find it if you can. Every day you wake up, be happy, don't be sad. When you are angry, count to ten, the anger goes away. Just like the sun sets every night and rises on a brand new day. Singing the happiness song, we're so happy. Run along, Bye. children, or you'll be late for school now. Don't dawdle, it's the same. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Oh. oh! Hmm? Oh. 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 Now, if I was the sort of man to bear a grudge, <laughs> I might find it... <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Delicious. Would you like another cup of tea, monsieur? There is still some left in the pot. Thank you, Rigodon. Although I must say, it's not as good as the tea that you make in London. What about you, Professor Liedenbrock? Do you want some more tea? Oh, he's asleep. Oh, mm. oh well, he'll certainly nod it off quickly. It has been a very long day. I feel quite tired myself. I think I'll just... Well, gentlemen, it looks as though we're... Hmm. What's going on here, Hans? Hmm. What is this? Oh! oh, oh, oh. <coughs> now I understand everything. The tea. There was something in the tea. <laughs> I've done it. Without these scientific instruments, they'll never get to the center of the earth. They won't even know where to start. My boss, Sullivan, will be very pleased with me. <laughs> Well, let's 
let's see. Just as I thought, this bag contains everything that you needed, Willy Fog. You're done for. <laughs> that stupid guide Hans certainly did me a big favor. I even charged that idiot Fog three Rixdales a week for my services. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Three Rixdales a week isn't very much for a good man. In fact, some people might say that it was pretty cheap, huh? Ah. <clears throat> I didn't much care for the way you hit me over the head at the port. <laughs> and I certainly didn't like the way that you stole my horses. Listen, my friend, I was just following orders. It wasn't my idea. I'm just not like that. Okay, so who was it ordered you to take my place and steal my horses? Uh, well, it was Professor Fridrikson, yes. Professor Fridrikson, huh? But he just wouldn't do a thing like that. Uh, I'll say goodbye then, my stupid friend. Give my regards to Willy Fogg. You'll have plenty of time to get to know Mr. Fogg now that he's had to cancel his trip to the center of the Earth. <laughs> that was a dirty trick, my friend. Come on, Hans. Can't you take a joke? I was only having fun with you. You're not angry, surely? I thought you might try something tricky, so I took the precaution of tying that bag to a tree. Friends, then? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Come on, Professor. Wake up. I think the Professor had more teas than we did. What's happened, Mr. Fogg? And why are you looking at me like that? What's happened, Rigadon? My head! Are you sure you're all right now, Professor Lidenbrock? All right! I feel terrible, Mr. Fogg, terrible! However, I would not let a headache, even such an awful headache as this, prevent me from continuing our journey to the Sneffels Volcano, Mr. Fogg. Just look at it. Isn't it wonderful? A scientist's dream to follow Sakusum's footsteps. That will be impossible now, Professor. Hmm? What do you mean, Rigadon? Nothing can possibly stop our expedition to the Sneffels Volcano. What is it now? I'm sorry to say that Hans has betrayed us all, Professor Lidenbrock. But Fridrikson picked Hans personally for our expedition. Oh, very well, I suppose we will have to continue our journey without him. It will be difficult, but there we are. I'm afraid we can't do anything without the attaché case. The attaché case? But what about my compass and all the other instruments? Just a moment, Professor. Somebody's coming and, well, it appears to be our guide, Hans. He put sleeping powder in our teas and turns up as if nothing has happened. I think there's probably more to this than meets the eye, Rigadon. Look, he has the attaché case with him. Well, whatever he's up to, he won't catch me off my guard again. I'll be ready for him this time. I believe this case belongs to you, Mr. Fogg. Somebody attacked me at the port. We were also attacked, as if you didn't know. Here. Hmm. I don't think it was Hans who attacked us, Professor. I believe it was an old acquaintance of ours. Yes, of course. It must have been transfer. He's still following us, Monsieur Fogg. Well, fortunately, nothing is missing, so we should be able to reach the volcano without wasting any more valuable time. So who is this transfer you were all talking about? Well, apart from anything else, he's a very smart businessman. He asked me for three Rickstyles a week. That'll be five Rickstyles, if you don't mind. Very well, Hans, it's agreed. Five Rickstyles a week, and now I know that we have the best guide for our expedition. With Hans leading us, we approached the village of Budia, where we were going to spend the night before climbing the Sneffels Volcanoes the next day. Oh! Mon dieu, mon dieu! Oh no! What is happening? We are in terrible danger, monsieur! Calm down, Rigadon. This volcano has been dormant for over 600 years. Oh, so why does it choose now to wake up? It's exploding! Whoa! Whoa! Hmm. On the contrary, these geysers are a guarantee that the volcano is stable and that our journey to the center of the Earth will be safe. As long as the pressure is released through these holes, the volcano cannot erupt. Eh, Mr. Frog? The professor means that if the volcano is allowed to let off steam, then it won't blow its top, okay? Mm, this water is hot. Of course it's hot, Rigadon. What did you expect? Well, there it is, gentlemen. The village of Budir.
Good evening, friends. May we camp here for the night? Well, that depends. Come over and talk. We only require one night's lodgings, my friends. We are on a very important scientific expedition, so first thing tomorrow, we shall continue on our way to the volcano. Hey. What do you think? Mm-mm. 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 Tomorrow will be a long day and we must get our strength back for the journey. I suppose we will just have to find somewhere else to sleep tonight, monsieur. But one of those huts would have been very comfortable. What on earth is that man up to, Mr. Fogg? Hmm. They'll lend us their hut to sleep in for the night, Mr. Fogg, if we will give them our horses. They want our horses? That's absolutely outrageous! I agree, Professor Lidenbrock, but I'm afraid that we have very little choice. And we don't need the horses now, anyway. We don't need the horses because we are going down into the center of the... Uh... Did you say something, Rigodon? Uh, I said I'd better get the supper ready, monsieur. Now then, compressed air gauge? Ooh, lamp? I've never seen a lamp that looked quite like this before, Professor. What is it? That is a Ruhmkorff lamp, Rigodon, a lamp used exclusively by miners. Oh? It's a very safe light to use underground because it only uses an electric current and doesn't cause explosions. Oh, mon Dieu! An explosion? That happens underground? Are you talking, monsieur, about a terrible underground explosion in the center of the Earth where we happen to be going tomorrow? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Mm -mm. You needn't worry, Rigodon. That lamp will make sure it doesn't happen. Now let's get a good night's sleep. We've all got a long journey ahead of us tomorrow. Uh, shush. Stop. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Now I would be obliged if you would return our property. I realize you must lead a very hard life here, but you have already been paid in full for your hospitality. If you please. Is there anything wrong, Monsieur Fogg? No, no, nothing at all, Rigodon. I think that we'll all be able to get a good night's sleep now. Good night. Good night, Monsieur Fogg. Well, by this time tomorrow night, will be inside the volcano. Oh, mon dieu. That's quite right, Rigodon. We'll be inside the volcano itself. Nothing can stop us now. <laughs> <laughs> you will never get away with it, Mr. Fogg. I shall personally make sure you never get to the center of the Earth. On the next stage of our incredible journey to the center of the Earth, you will see how we had to negotiate a perilous mountain path, while Tico was having a lot of trouble staying on his feet, too. Then Princess Romy found herself in the clutches of our enemies, and we got caught in one of the worst dust storms I have ever seen. It stopped us in our tracks. Would this mean we would have to abandon our journey to the center of the Earth?